Several months ago, I conducted a quick and dirty test to see which surface worked best on Miller tables. I put some gold on it and tapped it on the side at a certain angle and um, flow rate, and uh, the results were uh, that the slightly textured surface that came with my USA Prospectors table actually worked the best. But I was never happy with that test because you know, some I might have tapped too hard or not hard enough, and there were too many variables. So I wanted to come up with a better test. And what I came up with this, I set up my Miller table with an inclinometer. This is something that measures the, uh, the angle of the surface. And I uh, put a jack on the back end so that I could increase the angle of the Miller table very smoothly without bumping the surface at all. Then I placed nine pieces of gold, uh, three that were uh, plus 20s, three plus 30s, and three plus 50s, because that's uh, the sort of size range where most of your gold is going to be found and is most appropriate for a miller table. Then, while slowly cranking up the jack, I observed the line of gold and then recorded the angle at which the first piece of gold started to flow down and then continued increasing the angle until at least a second piece flowed down. And the maximum usable angle I decided would be the average of those two angles. I then proceeded to test each of six different surfaces that way. Uh, three that are uh, common and recognizable, three maybe not so much, to find out which performed the best. Here are the materials I tried. In addition to the original surface that came on my USA Prospector uh, Miller table, which is a textured plastic uh, painted with what I believe is green chalkboard paint, I used a piece of slate. This is what's often mentioned as one of the best surfaces. A hobby co mat, a piece of easy liner from Lowe's, and I had this oriented so that the ripples or bumps were perpendicular to the flow of water, a piece of natural gum rubber with the sticky side up, a sheet of uh, drafting board mat. I came across one reference that said that this worked very good. And then finally, a sheet of neoprene synthetic rubber. Here's an example of how I conduct a test. In this case, I'm using slate, one of the materials often quoted as being the very best for Miller tables. I start by lining up a row of nine pieces of gold. All these pieces are typical for placer gold, that is fairly flat. What I'm going to do now is slowly increase the angle and then take note of when the pieces of gold start to uh, drift downstream. And there goes the first piece at an incline of 11 degrees. And here are the results. Now I'll be the first to admit that this is not a perfect experiment. As the angle increases, all sorts of other variables are also changing. The layer of water is getting thinner, the velocity of the water over the table is increasing, the actual flow rate may, actually, may decrease because the head height, the distance the pump has to uh, deliver the water is increasing. Uh, but it's a good first cut at a quantitative comparison of some of the major Miller table surfaces. What a lot of people are going to be surprised about is that the U.S. Prospector original table surface is still the best. Now, if you look at my earlier test where I was tapping the side, 
it also did the best in that test. So now we have two tests saying that this texture surface with the uh, green chalk bar paint is really the best. So that's getting pretty conclusive. The Hobby Comets are very good and this validates why a lot of people like them. Pure gum rubber is a little tricky because the sheets come with two different surfaces. One side will be very glossy and, and almost sticky. It has a very high coefficient of friction. The other side will be rougher and uh, quite a bit uh, less sticky. I use the sticky side up here. It's not sticky in the terms of being adhesive, just that the, uh, the nature of the surface grabs materials. That was very good, but uh, the gum rubber tended to warp. It was very difficult to get it to lay flat. What's surprising also is that the neoprene, or synthetic rubber, did so much worse. Easy Liner, even with the texturing, was quite low on the list, which is surprising because a lot of people swear by this material. So, I hope you found these uh, results interesting and useful for the next time you go to resurface or build your own Miller table. For me, I'm going to stick with the original U.S. Prospector table surface. Thank you very much for watching.